Alright, so, as of November 12th, the PlayStation 5 has dropped. We've been playing it for a little over a week now, and it's been a long time coming. Because back in 2013, the PlayStation 4 dropped, the good old Angular model, and we officially marked the beginning of the next generation back then. Xbox and PS4 were moving head to head, and it was a pretty dang good generation with a lot of amazing titles. Fast forward to 2020. Here we are, and now we have this behemoth as well as the Xbox Series X. I didn't get my hand on the Xbox, we'll work our way to it eventually. But me and my friend here have managed to spend plenty of time with this. Now, the games that we've been able to play right now, we worked with Demon Souls, uh, played some free-to-plays, Warframe, uh, Gun and Battle Operation, Genshin Impact, played some Doom, Borderlands on split screen, Sackboy, and pretty sure I'm forgetting something else, but point is we actually got a lot of hours out of this. So let's just give this a bit of a review and keep in mind that this is a review at launch. So that's going to kind of change based on what's available at the moment and how the current state of the console is. That's what we're going to be working from. So after and during the unboxing process, what were your initial impressions of this thing? So my thoughts on the design of this is that it shows that Sony wasn't afraid to try a different design with a console. As you go from the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, 3, and 4, they all kind of have a, a similar look to them. The 4 is really the only one that kind of dared to jump away from that weird oval-shaped uh, square design that they went for. Uh, which isn't bad, but in my opinion, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on how the, how it looks, how tall it is. It's, it's uh, just, you know, you see all the memes, it looks like Cell. You know, looks like a router, looks like a modern fan, a tower fan. But me personally, I like the look of it. It's, you know, it's sleek. It looks like something that's 10 years apart from what the PS4 is. It's, it's got a great design to it. You can lay it flat. You can stand it up like we have it here. Uh, you know, the PS4 came out with a lot of different versions. You know, they had the slim, the regular, the pro. And they all look good, they look great. They keep the angular design, which put it apart from the Xbox. And I think that it's gotten a little more hate than I think it should on the design. Because I know a lot of people, you know, the Xbox fans will say, oh, the Xbox Series X looks better. And in my opinion, I don't think the Xbox really can go that far outside of its own name. Because in the sense, it's an Xbox. So it's gonna have to be some form of box, no matter you know, no matter what kind of design they come up with. Otherwise, you're really not sticking to the name of the console. PlayStation, on the other hand, can do whatever the hell they want. They can think it could be a triangle, or an hourglass, or whatever they want, because they're not. You know, in my opinion, I don't think they're limited by the actual name of the console itself. So as far as I'd say on the design, I think they killed it. I think it's nice. It is big, but I mean, it's nothing new. I play PC, so I, you know, I work around a tower a lot. And it's not, you know, it's small compared to that. But I know for console players, it's a big jump. You're trying to find a place to put it. But I'm sure you guys will find a place. It's it's nice all over. Yeah. Uh, what got to me was, yeah, I'm, I love the design personally. I think it's great. Uh, but what really got me was I wasn't prepared for the size of it, even after seeing the pictures and comparisons. Uh, you know, you put this thing next to the TV or next to the other systems, and it kind of dawns on you, oh, God. Yeah, you, you better have the space ready for this thing if you're planning on getting it. Uh, vertically is probably your best bet, but if you do horizontal, yeah, you better have something prepped out, a sort of plan already all set in motion in your entertainment center. But otherwise, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. It's sleek. It, it looks like something, you know, straight for the future. Um, just all in... All in all, I think it's a very appealing design, even down to the little details of you got the PlayStation, you know, X, circle, square, and triangle design. Just very, very tiny in here as a pattern, and even on the grip of the controller, 
If you look close enough, you will see it. Just all in all, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with it. Um, I think it's fantastic, and I'm I'm curious if they're going to do any sort of uh, add-ons for this thing, or if we're going to see different base plates or whatever in the future, but overall, just the console itself, uh, by appearance, I'm pleased with it. And not to diss on Xbox or anything, because, I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad design. It's just very... Simple. It's very simple. It's modern. It's... You don't have to go overboard with the design just to have it to be appealing, because you, you look at that thing and it'll fit in just about anywhere. Yeah. So, I, I've got no problem with that, and i got no problem with this. I, I enjoy both. But, to move on from there, uh, after actually, you know, turning this on, getting your hands on it, the setup was pretty straightforward and efficient. It has a lot of uh, security measures, it seems like. A lot of protection that you can set up. Um, but once we actually got it on, got it set up, very fast process. What'd you think of the UI? So when it came down to the UI, I know me and you both were a little confused at first. But that's just the general switch from console to console. I know from the PS3 to the PS4, um, the original UI wasn't that much different. But it was different enough to incite you know excitement when you actually t start up your uh, playstation every time you use it but you know over and over again the uh, ps4 released new ui updates and it changed it more and more and more and slowly it, it started to turn into the ui of the playstation 5 which whether they did that on purpose or not uh you know it's it's good on me there's a new there's a couple new features to it with the controller and how the ui works it's going to take a little bit of getting used to but i think overall with your ability to select certain tabs or options to be available when you click your PlayStation Home button. I think it's a nice feature, that way you don't got over cluttering, it's not all there. You can instantly access certain parts like your mic, or you know, like if you want to access like your videos, YouTube, you can open up something else without having to, to go straight home and then scroll to your, you know, your uh, media and then go down to on Netflix, whatever you want. You can go straight there and click on uh, your Netflix tab, YouTube tab. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. You can also access your microphone and your controller and all that stuff. You got extra settings there. I just think all over that it's, it's going to take some time to get used to, but I think it unclutters the actual main background of the UI and keeps it, you know, still keeps it up to date and new. That sounds reasonable enough. Uh, at first glance, it didn't seem like it was that different from the PlayStation 4 UI, because I mean, it's basically just everything's kind of working from the top left and they still got the tiles. It's just now they kind of limited the amount of tiles that you see and they kind of focus more on here's the first last five games that you played and then here's your library with an installed tab, your PlayStation Plus tab and all that. Just everything that you own or have played with, essentially. Um... The thing that did catch me, catch me off guard was it, it's a lot more dependent on the actual controller now. Uh, whenever you're using this thing, you know how on PS4, if you tap it, you just kind of get a quick... Uh, you're quickly pulled back to the home menu. But now, if you tap this, it brings up a UI at the bottom of your screen of, okay, here's your friends, here's your uh, current connected devices... Here's parties, downloads, and just everything. And you could select what sort of accessibility there is. Versus holding it where... I believe holding it actually takes you back to home menu now. Yeah. yeah. Which, that, that's a little funky to me because now it seems kind of flipped. So if you're coming from PS4, you better kind of be ready for that. I, I'm still kind of struggling with that change, but... Overall, there's going to be a sense of familiarity, I think. It shouldn't mess with you too much. Uh, the only other thing I might mention is it'd be nice if there was customizable themes. But if it doesn't happen, I won't really complain. I'd be cool with it as is. Because the PS4, there was a lot of cool themes, but they're by the end of its life cycle. I hate it when they start letting people uploading these custom themes, because... You get this really low quality 
really, really low quality garbage, typically with stolen art and pictures and just crappy music overlaid on it and they charge you like five bucks and it's like this, you're getting very low quality theme here for a price that is a little ridiculous with assets they didn't even make. So who knows, I hope if they do go with themes that they actually bring back, you know, developer themes and only keep it at that. But beyond that, let's move on to the next bit, which I think deserves a point in all of its own. The DualSense controller. Now, what was your impressions of it just by when you first picked it up when we were unboxing it versus when you played like Astro's Playroom and got into the games? So, coming from the, the PS4 to this PS5 controller, um, I know I've played both Xbox and PlayStation growing up all my life. And one thing I did like more about the Xbox controller is that they didn't feel so flimsy and light like the PlayStation controllers were, you know? Because with these, unless you get the batteries and you know, they weigh about, uh, they weigh a little bit more. But comparing both side by side, I think if you were to add the batteries to a standard Xbox controller, it weighs about the same as that. Yeah. So, as far as weight, it doesn't feel, you know, plasticky. It doesn't feel like it's it's gonna break if you drop it off your couch or chair or anything like that. Um, the buttons were a little bit to get used to. They're not like a standard um, PlayStation buttons. You know, you get a lot of people when you play like God of War games or. Games that require a lot of button mashing, you know, they get certain, uh, hell that, the pop-up mash button fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Those, uh, these buttons feel a little, not stiff, but they feel a little more rigid when you press them. They're not, they're not so, like, loose and non-satisfying to press. These feel satisfying to click. The sticks are great as always, you know. They feel nice. They got a nice texture grip on them. They're not going to slip off very easy. I'm barely putting any pressure on them right now and I can move it all around just fine uh, the touchpad's great you know they blend it in nicely with the controller it's not a weird block like it used to be on the PS4 where it's kind of obvious that it was there this blends in pretty well um, I like the PlayStation home button um, it's just the PlayStation symbol itself it's pretty nice so this PlayStation 5 controller came with a mic and when I first heard about that I was a little you know, I was a little on edge about it it's, you know, you think a mic and a controller like this is going to be bad, and when you're talking into it, it's going to be mad, bad, but when you, we actually got to testing it, we hopped into a party chat, and the quality coming out of the controller was pretty good. You know, it's not going to be a set of, like, Steelys or the PlayStation Pulse uh, headset playing in your ears, but it is good enough quality that you, if you want to, you can just use the controller as a microphone. Um, as far as the voice going in, from what I was told by the uh, person I was in a chat with, said that the the voice was good. It was great. It's not going to be like a you know an expensive microphone, but it, it's good. It doesn't sound bad. And you can't hear me now, right? Right? Okay. <laughs> so yeah. And now you can hear me. No, no, I was just testing out the mute button on the controller. Oh, it's really weird because when you first start, start talking, there's like this small starting. When you first start, you go there. Uh, oh. It's very interesting. <laughs> All right. That's so weird. Yes, Which is also true. nice. The uh, start options buttons are on the side. They're small. They're a little wider out than they normally are in the other controllers. Uh, which is. It's not bad. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Um, they did switch over from the US uh, micro USB. It is now a Type-C port, which works well. Um, you know, it kind of, if you're an Android person, that really helps you out if you've got 50 chargers all over the house. Uh, as far as the actual auxiliary plug-in port, um, my friend here had a, like a, a connection or an attachment to his uh, PlayStation 4 controller for when he'd play certain games, you know, you got you know, remap your controllers and stuff back here, right? 
Um, unfortunately, none of those carry over, but you know, that's, that's for seeing. Controllers aren't going to be the same. As far as the touchpad goes, when we actually turned this thing on and used it. The touchpad tracks nice. I do recommend, even if you don't care much uh, about how it works, do try the Astros Playroom. Um, I tried it, and the haptic feedback is just crazy. It's ridiculous, honestly. No um, question. Do you think it's just a gimmick, or do you think, like, no, this is something that I need from now on? This is going to play into the future of gaming now? I think now, I think haptic feedback is that first step towards not just consoles, but I think VR in the future. Because I don't know if there's any haptic feedback type stuff on any VR headsets right now. I know there's like full body tracking and all this other stuff. But eventually I'm assuming haptic feedback could lead to full body suits that allow you to, you know, feel certain things in games. Say you get hit. It's not necessarily going to be painful, but you'll be able to tell when you're, you're hitting the arm and stuff like that. You know, obviously not there yet, but eventually I think that this technology is going to grow into something that will eventually span out across all consoles and all sorts of ga sorts of gaming systems in general. Because um, the, the triggers are crazy too. When you're playing uh, shooting games, like we played Borderlands, we didn't get our hands on Call of Duty because you know, it's Call of Duty, there's one every year. Um, but when we got our hands on it, different guns and different weapons actually have different trigger strength pulls for it. Like if you were to shoot a revolver in a game like we were playing Borderlands, you shoot a revolver and it has very stiff trigger pulls for each shot. It actually makes you kind of feel like you're shooting a gun. Um, and if you pull or shoot like maybe a semi-automatic pistol and the trigger's not as hard. We played Demon Souls and when you were going to use the bow, you pull it back and the haptic feedback puts tension on the trigger to make it feel feel like you're actually pulling back the bow Jesus. or you feel the bow being pulled back while you're holding the trigger down so, it's all great like when you go through Astro's playroom the different materials you walk on sand water metal glass all of it the vibrations are just keyed in so well that if you actually sit there and look at what you're walking on while focusing on feeling the vibrations it feels like you're you know you're there you can tell what someone's walking on it matches up the vibrations match up with the surface you're on and it's it's actually really crazy it's honestly not what i was expecting they said haptic feedback you know i blew it right over my head um and, you know it's sensory relay stuff whatever, whatever the hell that goes along with that but i'm way more surprised and happy with it. I actually went with something like this because that was a big leap from a playstation 4 um you know, I don't. I don't think the Xbox does that. I'm not really. I'm not sure on their stuff. Um, but I think that it's it's a nice way to add a lot of immersion to games when you play. I know we only got a few games out right now that actually utilize this technology. But I think as the consoles' life expectancy goes forward, you start getting you know different versions of the PS5. You know kind of like PS4, Slims, Pro version, whatever the hell comes out in the future. I think controllers are going to be crazy. You know, you get custom controller people are going to come out. I don't know if this technology is going to be available to them or they might just order controllers and just do it that way and charge a little extra for them. I think that's how it works. Uh, but I think it's going to be, it's going to be great. Honestly, I'm excited to see what actually happens in the future with this. Absolutely. I mean, that that's pretty spot on. Uh, I gotta say that the controller is what kind of blows me away the most about this system is just getting my hands on it because when I heard haptic feedback and adaptive triggers it's just something I kind of shrugged off or kind of tilted my head and scratched it a bit like why why are you considering this a selling point you'd think that something so it sounds almost gimmicky at first but then when you actually do go into Astro's playroom where it kind of gives you that test of hey uh this is a game, but it's all at the same time like a tech demo to show you what this controller is capable of, and it's actually fun. And they show you, like, here we're going to have you test out this little rocket-propelled ship, and you can actually feel the resistance and how it rattles and vibrates, and it was like, whoa. 
you got the little guys that they drop in there and you're spinning them around. Yeah. Too. That was crazy. And you, you could actually feel like there was something on in the controller, like a they drop all these robots in the controller at one point, and as you tilt it around, you could feel like, yes, there's different things hitting at different parts inside this controller. You could feel what would be the individual little robots inside the controller basically falling over each other and hitting different parts of the controller as you rotate it. And it's really, it's really crazy how accurate and just, you know, precise it is when you're actually moving the controller. Yeah, we're... Words almost can't do it justice. It's just one of those things where you get your hands on it and you might just kind of go bug-eyed and stare at it and just kind of like, whoa, okay. And then from there, um, I guess we'll just... Some performance. Yeah, graphics and performance. Okay, so I think what gave us the truest, you know... The most accurate representation of the... As far as the current games that are out, Probably is going to be Demon Souls. Yeah, because hands down, it's basically the only actual, specifically for PS5 title, right? Because I mean, yeah. Cold War, uh, Miles Morales, uh, Godfall, I think even yeah. all on PS4, and it's basically just PS4 uh, uh, to PS5 upgrade that you're getting. Yeah. Um, Demon Souls is basically like the truest, utmost, yeah, exclusive for the game, which, not not dogging on um, Call of Duty because, you know, their campaigns have always been over the top and impressive as far as graphic. Graphically, they've improved a lot. Um, Godfall, we didn't get our hands on it, but the aesthetic and art style of that game as well is showed off spectacularly in uh, the PlayStation 5 as well. So when it comes to Demon Souls, it's really going to be my main talking point for as far as performance and graphics go. Um, they have two different versions. You can either play a 4K native at 60 FPS and then a true 4K at 30, I believe. Yeah. And you get the options. You can do performance or um, what the hell's the other one? It's, performance or resolution mode? or No, it's, it's, it's like cinematic mode. Oh, yeah. And so... As far as games like that, if you're going to play Demon's Souls uh, in a single player fashion, if you're not an online person for the type of game, cinematic mode wouldn't be bad, but the two difference in performance and cinematic mode, you're really not going to tell much of a difference unless you have a 4K TV. So I would recommend the 60 FPS for games like that because the extra frames are going to help you out if you're a multiplayer fan. You know, give you that little extra edge that you never had playing before on consoles. Um, you know, 30 a lock 30 FPS games. I know maybe a couple of 60 FPS games came out there at the end, but I'm not too sure what they were. Yeah. Um, but this is a big jump for consoles in general. Uh, I'm happy with it. I know uh, Modern Warfare had cross compatibility. And the 30 FPS on there made it difficult for uh, them to compete with most PC players in general. Now that this is out, you know, you get to 60 FPS, you get better reactions. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I heard that it can go up to 120 for Modern Warfare, but I'm not sure how true that is. Um, but regardless, you get better frames. The designs um, aren't going to be limited. So if you have a all over all platform game like um, PS4, Xbox, Switch, PC. I know a lot of the time that games that are made for all consoles are limited by the lowest form of console they come out for, uh, which is tough for you know major titles. But now that the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are out, that's not really going to happen anymore. You're we're only seeing you know we're only scraping the tip of the iceberg right now but as far as graphics go uh demon souls is fantastic uh it looked great performed great you know if you play demon souls in the past it's uh very nostalgic it's uh, nice to you know nice to go back and play on it feels good the haptic feedback works great with the console the graphics are not you know overly demanding on the console either it doesn't seem like it's struggling in the slightest um, i know there are some trailers um 
like Cyberpunk's coming out, and that's going to be a, a huge open world game uh, with you know multiple assets going at at the same time. But I know that they they hid some of the uh, performance limitations of the console within the city because if you actually watch a Cyberpunk trailer and you watch the horizon above the you know the Sky, skyline skyscrapers you will see things pop in and i'm sure game developers are going to hide that limitation they always have in whatever game they make they find a way to hide it but you can tell there's still a limitation on the console and i'm sure as you know the next 10 years progress that they're going to come out with different versions it's just going to keep getting better and better and before you know it they're going to have 120 frames on a console and it's going to be crazy um but it's as far as comparing it to the last gen, this is you know twenty steps up. Like it's there's no there's no comparing the last two consoles. You know people think it's gonna be oh it's not that much of a difference. It's it's a big difference. And people who played on thirty FPS their whole life, um, you're not really gonna be able to tell the difference too much going from thirty FPS to sixty FPS until you go from 60 fps back down to 30 and then you're like what the hell have i been playing for the past 10 years um because that's how i was when i got into pc gaming and i started playing games that would allow me to get you know 120 plus frames uh going back down to anything below that you can notice it and you start to notice those things so the as far as improving that for the average console player is nice because most back compatibility games that I notice also it bumps it up to 60 if it's not a locked uh, 30 FPS game I know certain games have to um, get updates for PlayStation 5 specifically so the frames will be better and performance will be better uh, but I think as far as uh, performance and graphics goes I think this is a huge a huge thing for consoles in my opinion I'm happy so it'll make cross compatibility way more viable and fair uh, in the upcoming future. I think all that's pretty accurate. And uh, I mean, just when we booted up Demon Souls for the first time and we really got to walk around in those environments, it was really stunning. Up to this point, I would have said that the most beautiful game I've played was The Last of Us 2 in terms of graphics and the environment and the sound design. Demon Souls already kind of kicked that from its podium. And. Mm -hmm. For, for those of you who were fans of Demon Souls, I mean, as far as I can tell, it is basically still the Demon Souls from PS3. It's just, it's got a beautiful, completely overhauled coat of paint on it, and it controls, looks, plays wonderful. Um, what else? I think it's also worth uh, pointing out that uh, the, the cooling on this thing. Did you ever really notice when the fan kicked up in the... So the only time you really notice the fan is when the sound really settles in your room. And there's no background noise, there's nothing else. And maybe you're, you know, updating a game and it kicks in. You hear the fans go, but even when the fans are going, they're not loud. They're subtle, they're quiet. So if you have this in a room or you have like a spouse that sleep goes to bed early while you play or whatever whatever it is and you got to keep quiet and unlike the you know the ps4 i know it makes a lot of noise uh, sometimes mine specifically i had a gamestop uh, exclusive the white one that came out and i don't know what the hell happened to it but that one sounds like two jets taking off at the same time and it's it's crazy it's it's pretty loud so it makes it really hard to use that console when you have somebody else in the room that's trying to you know, rest or whatever the hell is going on. Um, so with the ability of it being quiet, it's, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty well deserved. I think, uh, I think the quietness is deserved. I think consoles have been waiting for this for too long. Oh yeah, that's an excellent way to put it. Um... Yeah, like, all my friends comment how their PS4 will sound like a jet engine taking off, and this Xbox One kicks up, it, it's very, very noticeable and loud. Yeah. Um, so in terms of that, it's very subtle, very quiet. Uh, that 
I guess they really did pay off on just how far they took the cooling system and tied this thing, because they, they say that's a huge reason that this thing is so big, is because of its, they focus so hard on the cooling in it, and I think it personally shows in every way. Oh yeah, cooling for sure. When you start getting more software inside your system that's more graphically demanding, uh, your cooling is going to have to be demanding as well. Like, you look at most PC rigs, people who play, you know, super intense ultra graphics, like 270 FPS, like, games like that run your PC hard, and you look at them now have liquid cooling and all sorts of crazy cooling just to keep their consoles, or not consoles, their uh, towers below a certain degree. And I think as the performance and all that stuff improves in consoles, I think you will start seeing bigger consoles until we get to a point to where, you know, they come out with a new technology and they're condensing down uh, graphically demanding software, smaller. Um, like, you know, I know, like, floppy disks, and so really weird way to do it with floppy disks. I don't know if y'all old enough to even know what the hell it is. Um, but that used to be the old USB, and now we got these tiny little USB drives. You know what I mean? They, we're going to come to a point to where technology-wise, I think we're going to be able to condense down uh, performance-based software enough. And I think at that point, you'll see that the consoles get smaller. But until that happens, it wouldn't surprise me if these stayed on a larger scale. I think that's pretty reasonable. And something else that I, I guess we should touch on real quick is you, you saw how some of these uh, PS4 titles were benefiting from being played on PS5. Uh, Gundam Battle Operation. I've watched that game run on my friend's base PS4. It freaking chugs. It struggles to run that game. Uh, even on PS4 Pro, it kind of jumps all over the place in this performance. This thing, it's... how. What would you say that frame rate was consistently at? I think it's consistently anywhere from 55 to 60. I don't, I don't think it quite reaches 60. I don't know if that's going to have to come out with updates eventually. Uh, I know backwards compatibility games are going to be... You know, you're going to see updates for games like that that allow them to be more um, entitled to use the capability of this console. Especially games that are exclusive only to consoles. So, I think that's where those will show you the most. Yeah. And when I did show that footage off, people were like, this almost looks like a completely different name game now. I can't wait to get my hands on this. And, you know, as I tried out other titles, Warframe, they, they completely gave that uh, a facelift, a nice graphical update to it. Still plays wonderful. Plays super fast, super smooth. Didn't ever have a, any frame drops at all on that game. Uh, then we did some split screen games. How was that with uh, Sackboy when we did the PS5 upgrade, as well as Borderlands 3 with the PS5 upgrade? Because, you know, you play a split screen game back on PS4, you're going to either see it drop down significantly in frames and they're going to lower the graphics quality, but that wasn't the case with uh, the games that we tried out on split screen. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands kept a 60 frames per second frame rate, and it still looked like it was better than it looked on PS4, with both of us doing the split screen on there. And, uh, I mean, Sackboy, that's, that was a pleasant little game. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a graphically, graphically demanding game, but it still performed well. Um, I think one thing you will notice is going from uh, 30 to 60, is motion blur is going to be way more overpowering as you will notice in games. You'll have to turn it down a little bit because it seems almost sickening. You want to turn it down all the way because you'll, you'll start getting screen tearing. I know that's a thing on Demon Souls is you have your, uh, your motion blur. And if you turn it down all the way, um, you'll see tiny little screen tears in there because I think that motion blur helps with the, you know, the uh, rendering as far as you're rotating the camera around. Um, so you might want to keep that in mind if you're playing a game and it looks unnatural when you're looking the camera around. Mess with your motion blur sensitivity, that might help. Um, 
So that's something to look out for as well. Um, I think the console in the past you would get, you know, you know, your custom made consoles for games that came out. Like this is uh, the God of War edition PlayStation 4. So you get stuff like this, which is cool. It's great. Collectors, people who are a fan of games, want to go and buy those so they can have it. Um, I'm hoping in the future for this, instead of releasing a whole different version of a console, these plates come off very easily. I'm hoping that within collector's editions, instead of releasing this whole console with a collector's edition, they'd kind of just release, uh, release these plates, something you can interchange with yours instead of needing to buy a whole another you know, $400, $500 console just for a special edition. And I'm assuming that's what they're doing because a third-party company was about to release, you know, face plates, but Sony said, no, 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 you, we can't let you do that. And right now the assumption is that they said that because Sony's about to be the one stepping in to do the face plate stuff. And they said, if you want to make anything third-party, then do stickers for the system. So I, I, I think... Yeah, you will see face plates. You've seen, just... you've seen a few people plastic dip their. Uh... Yeah. For those of you who don't know what plastic dip is, it's basically like a, uh, it's an image or a texture or a set pattern that you want on something. People do it the wheels a lot for you know, tuner cars and just vehicles in general. It's basically a layer of an image that's laid over, I believe, water, and you just take the shell and you dip it in there. And it comes out and it'll be carbon fiber or whatever image you want. But I mean, that's, that's something simple like that. That's instead of charging an arm and a leg, you just got simple, you know, side panels, which is great. Um, I don't know how it's going to work for the series X. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know if there's any plates like that that can just take off. But as far as uh, that goes, I think they are going to be stuck releasing limited edition consoles in that manner. Um, but if, PlayStation or Sony does decide to go with that method, I think they're going to save and probably get a lot of money out of that more than they expect, especially if they start, you know, giving old homages to uh, to games like maybe PlayStation 1 games you don't have anymore or like past, uh, Crash Bandicoot, stuff like that, things that are um, customizable. I don't know if Sony itself will deal with that or if they'll hire their own uh, party to represent them in that manner that's something i'm looking forward to um a negative is is that it is a it is a new console and we all know how new consoles perform sometimes you know there's hiccups uh they're not really tested in the manner that you would if you had a hardcore gamer people that are playing eight plus hours every day of their favorite games yeah. they're testing these systems um so right now there really isn't anything that breaks on these. I haven't seen anything on the Series X or the PlayStation 5. I think there was a hardware problem at one point. I've seen some instances of, you know, discs, like the disc tray, you just hear it clicking and making weird noises. It's not taking in the disc. That's the only real problem I've seen, not these people just blowing so, vape smoke into the system. Yeah, or... So as far as, as far as those systems, those break on every console every year. You get the disc drives are just, Sometimes you get you know, bad, uh, bad tech and some of them they mess up. That's that's a given. What to me I'm more worried about are the the really expensive pieces, your SSDs, you know, all that stuff that's really expensive. It's more expensive than most people realize because an average SSD, depending on the size that you get, can go from anywhere from if you're gonna get a small size, so a hundred dollars, all the way up to a grand, depending on what size you want. I know like a a two or four terabyte SSD for a PC at least is pretty over the top. So the only thing I keep an eye out for, I'm not saying don't get the console, it, ran, it runs great, we haven't had any problems with it. I know people aren't as lucky as we are to not have any con uh, you know problems with it so far. So, I mean, that's good. If you do get the slim version, you know, you don't have to have that in the back of your head. For me, I have the slim and it is, to me, it doesn't have this big bulky side to it. It keeps this nice, sleek shape on the way down. Uh, oh yeah. The... As far as my job goes, it's easier for me to have a slim since I do move around a lot. Uh, it makes it easy. For those of you who carry games everywhere. 
those of you who might be confused, uh, the digital edition, essentially. Yeah, digital. Wow. Well, well, you were saying Slim? Slim will come probably in the no, next yes, couple yeah. years. <laughs> digital way. Honestly, my biggest concern about this thing is storage. Yeah, yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure Sony's not gonna, um, they're not gonna ignore the requests of people. Eventually, I'm assuming they're gonna have some sort of external. I mean, you got three, um, USB, uh, Type threes on the back, so you got one. You got one here. You got two in the back, and then you got a Type C here, and you got a Type C in the back. So if they do release some sort of external SSD, or um, I'm sure that's probably gonna be an arm or leg to get one of those two. You're probably looking 60, 70, I kind of imagine, depending on the size. But right now, this thing is what 680. I think is what it has. It, it comes out at. 680, was it 685, right? It was like 860 technically, oh, 860. but it's uh. You know, after you get the system stuff installed and all that, and it's all set up, it is then 650, which that that's almost unacceptable at this point. Because look at how big Warzone's getting and Call of Duty. Yeah, Warzone's. I mean, you, that's more on unopt unoptimizing. It's a little ridiculous. If you're not like a a wide genre type games, if like if you keep to your big three, like you keep Call of Duty and then. You know, whatever is on the bandwagon each year. Um, and then you uninstall them when you're done playing. I know a lot of single player games are, they don't have a lot of replayability, so people will uninstall them and reinstall them whenever they're, um, they're playable again. Uh, that, the storage is a problem eventually. Uh, you know, as far as recording videos on there, they give you an option to, to tone down the time as much as you can so you don't have, you know, 20, 30 minute videos of you playing a, game on there which i think it was defaulting to an hour so keep that in mind if you just like record a couple clips and it's like hey you're out of space don't panic just yeah. check if it's like recording hour clips because that's probably what it did we yeah. had to trim it down to 15 minutes like yeah definitely go into your settings and look through your settings thoroughly because some of the presets on this console are pretty over the top like i said i think an hour recording um keep that in mind but overall, as far as the console itself goes, as it stands, it stands well above any of the previous generations. Obviously, it's a new console. It's going to stand there above them graphically and um, any way it can in that manner. But I think that what's coming and what's to come with these new consoles is going to be pretty, pretty outstanding. I know a lot of console players are excited to get their hands on something that puts them closer to um, uh, desktops, PCs to be uh, exact. Because it's hard, what I look forward to is being able to play with my friends on my PC across platforming. I know Modern Warfare did that. And a lot of times console players uh, will turn it off because they don't like dealing with PC players because of the mouse and keyboard blah 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 all that but i think as the frame rate improves and you know you get more time to react with each frame you get um i think it'll it'll open that door back up a lot more i'm excited to see what happens in that as far as ba uh, backwards compatibility um there's a lot of old games that i want to you know reinstall on the console and see how they work like uh, skyrim that would be a cool one to check out as well um, I know it doesn't change much when you play it on PC, but even still, seeing how it works on console and the load times will be great. Um, you know, little 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 games like that that you you don't necessarily think about until you start diving into. Oh shit! I have this huge library. What can I download? You know, what games can I play with and see that didn't run very well on uh, PS4 that might just you know open up a whole new door. You know, when you play on one five itself. Yeah. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is uh, I should probably go ahead and mention this don't think that just because you're on the PS5 and you are playing uh, like a PS4 game like take I don't know Siege for example that now you're in a new group no it's still basically the PS4 version it's just going to be performing better you're still going to be playing with the PS4 crowd I don't know if you really get an edge because it seemed like they still both perform pretty well Siege was optimized really well on PS4 I think for higher frame rate and it, it still plays just as great on here 
Um, what else did I try? Uh, I also squeezed in Genshin Impact. That was another game that was running very all over the place on even the PS4 Pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's awesome to see how much of a performance boost it's providing for these games. And in terms of any issues or concerns, every generation had its own problems. Uh, PS4 had the blue light of death. That PS3s had the yellow light of death. And I think the older PlayStations had potential disk drive issues. The only thing I'm currently aware of is I've heard of disk drive issues, at least on the Xbox end and on this end, I've heard people are getting clicking in their PS5 fan. That's all I really heard. Who knows if in the next few months we'll hear about some new blue light of death or something. It, it's just a matter of time and working out the bugs. The only bug I've personally encountered on this thing is some reason whenever I've tried booting up Gun the battle operations, there's been like two or three times where it just gives me an error that says something went wrong with no context and just restarting the system fixed that. So, don't know what that's about. Don't know if that's the game itself just bugging out or what, but I haven't experienced any real problems and I'm quite pleased so far. I think another point we forgot to mention is uh, for those of you who buy one console for a household, let's say you and your wife play on the same console. Um, I know some people will use the same account, but what's great is that I put my, for testing purposes, I put my account on his PlayStation 5, and he plays with the first controller, and I'll play with the second controller. So let's say we're playing a game like in Battle Operations, you have dailies or daily tasks that get you like coins and stuff like that, and allow you to unlock loot boxes and all those other stuff. So when he's done with his, all I gotta do is hold down my PlayStation button and it'll switch over to that second console or the second uh, profile on Meteor and I can go straight into the game. So uh, that switch is, uh, switch is very nice. Um, so as far as home use and you having a family, if you want to have different uh, profiles for each of your kids, so all they have to do is uh, switch that way. It makes it easy to, um, you know, scroll through your different profiles as you use them. Which is nice as well. Yeah. That, that's a lovely little feature. And it's good for... If you've got a... You know... Girlfriend or spouse or kids in the house. Or whatever it may be. Well there you go. That's a quick way for everyone to kind of... Have their own setups on the systems. And everyone's happy. Yeah for you KD people. And let your spouse take over. You know and how you... Sometimes people get pretty angry when their KD drops below a one point, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> um, there is that option, so it does make it easier for those of you who care about that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I mean, I suppose from there, should we move on to any potential concerns for the future right now with this thing? As far as the future goes, honestly, I don't really... I know right now a lot of people are struggling to get their hands on one. Uh, you got people that are sniping... Uh, consoles as they drop trying to buy as many as they can and resell them I hope people don't give into that especially the ones that are crazy high price your seven eight hundred nine hundred you know thousands uh, thousands of dollars for the console I mean if you're getting one of these for an extra hundred if you're that desperate to get one and you really need to get one fine if you got the money go ahead um, but I know a lot of people aren't going to be getting them for Christmas time because there's just such a high demand right now and i don't know if so many necessarily Not quarantine as yeah. so many people just clamoring for one yeah but we well, yeah, quarantine as well people are staying inside and trying to find anything they can do to entertain themselves so that's that's another thing to look out for but i'm sure once this ball starts rolling completely you know right now it's slowly tumbling down a hill it's not really getting any not really getting much traction due to the fact that the consoles aren't widespread to everybody but i think once the ps5 fully replaces the ps4 i think that uh, as far as upgrades and crazy stuff like that are going to start coming out wildly i think there's a lot of potential on this console yeah especially with the uh, customization on it so uh, if there is another thing i'd have to say is for those of you who are desperately wanting one right now 
Don't feel like you're being left behind in the dust right now. Don't feel like you're missing out on something and that where if you don't get it this very second, you're you're screwed. It isn't really that bad of a thing. If I have to be honest, Demon Souls is really like it's what you said. It's all the exclusive right now, so you're really not in a need to to push yourself to buy one. Yeah, and th that's really it. The rest of the games are just more or less. You can buy these on PS4 or Xbox One, or unless you want the performance boost that badly, but I'd say you're still going to get a good experience out. Don't feel the need to rush it or give in to a scalper right now. It's not that bad. Yes, I'm enjoying what I can play. The only other exclusive title is Astro's Playroom. I don't think Xbox Series X currently even really has any Exclusive. exclusives. It's not just anymore. upgrades. And... That is mainly what's making up this launch is just next gen upgrades. Yeah. So what I think in my opinion, I feel like Xbox should have waited. I know that it's it's a competition thing, people want, you know, they drop them at the same time. Uh, but I think I think Xbox should have had at least one exclusive lined up before they actually drop their console. Because as far as what do you want right now? It's like, well, I have a, I have an Xbox One X or whatever the hell the newest one was. Series X. Um, it's like, well, what do you have to choose from? Well, we can play Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cold War, Watch Dogs Legion, or Dirt 5, and it's like, oh, well, you could also play that on your last gen. So don't feel like you're being left out or missing out on something super spectacular right now. It's... Th this launch is... Most of what's out right now, you can already get your hands on. So, don't make any rash decisions or, uh, you know, bad financial choices right now. You you can wait a bit. Don't don't feel too bummed out. Basically. Um, other than that, yeah, my only other concern about this system for the moment is just like I mentioned, the, the space size. Something should probably be done about that, whether it's being able to upgrade it internally or add some sort of a reliable external hard drive source. It's going to be an SSD of some sort to match the, uh, the load times if you were to actually put something on it. Yeah. And if it, it does end up being some sort of external hard drive and it's not an SSD, um, I would recommend putting the games that you don't uh, want to run as fast on the hard drive and then putting the ones that you need the performance and speed on the actual console itself. Right. Um, other than that, I suppose we should just, unless there's anything that you want to bring up first, go move on to the final thoughts. As far as final thoughts go, um, I'm happy for console players. Um, it's this is a big it's a big league for you guys. I, mean, I can't wait to be able to play cross platform. It's one thing I've said multiple times that I'm looking forward to. Oh, yeah. um, I hope I don't know how true it is or if it's true at all. I hope as far as customization goes, they allow you to uh, do whatever you can with these shells and order them. And hopefully they're not an arm and a leg. I don't imagine they would be, but I can't wait for that. Um, buying wise. Yeah, don't feel don't feel the need to be rushed to get one. If you aren't financially in a point to where you can just spare the extra hundred or two hundred that you need to get one from a scalper, unfortunately, um, then don't do it. Just wait. There's nothing out except for Demon Souls that's an exclusive. And if you're not a Demon Souls fan, you have nothing to worry about. Just wait. There will be a point to where. Uh, it'll slow down. People will actually start being able to get a console in store. They're not going to disappear like hotcakes. So, overall, I think Sony killed it with this console. It's great. It looks nice. It's size. I know some people are, you know, it's daunting, but it's nice. You know, it shows, it shows that they actually tried to hit something and go for something outside the box. Definitely with the design itself. So... I think that's a good way to put it, and uh, me personally, um, jumping into this next-gen experiences, yes, it's been really nice so far. Um, I'm quite pleased with its performance, how it's 
kind of upgraded some of the last gen games and I love the design. Uh, the controller is what blows me the, away the most about the system so far. Um, I'm glad that we get to have some of these split screen games run so well versus kind of how some would used to chug on last gen. Uh, so if you do play a last gen game on here, for most part you're going to see some nice improvements. Uh, didn't seem like Doom Eternal or Siege really had that much of a change. Um, I'm sure though on the other hand if you put Ghost of, Tsush Ghost of Tsushima in or like I mentioned Gun Battle Operation you're probably going to notice a nice jumping quality in that. Uh, Definitely but, in those PlayStation exclusives the ones that you're not going to be able to see on a more graphically capable system like a PC. Yeah. Basically the Price for performance is actually quite impressive, I'd yeah. say. So for 4K 60, I'd say the price is pretty good. Um, it's definitely not any more than, not a lot more than any of the previous consoles came, that came out were priced at. So yeah. I think it's, overall, I think that it's it's well worth the dollar. You know, some of you kids that are asking for Christmas and stuff like that, it's your parents are like, I'm not spending five or four hundred and how many dollars on a console. Um, which is it's fair to them, but I think for the actual price of the console itself, it is worth it. I think that's a very good way to put it. And other than that, again, like we said earlier, don't feel like you need to rush out and buy this or give into a scooper. Don't feed into those people. It, you're... You're not missing out on too much at the moment. Um, Astro's Playroom was a very pleasant experience. It's, again, I'd almost call it like a tech demo and a game, but it's an enjoyable game. I I, I went as far as to platinum it. It's it's, it's it's more of a tech demo. It's only takes a few hours to platinum the game from what I've heard. And Demon Souls, like I said, it's the only exclusive. So if you're not a Demon Souls fan or a Souls fan in general, then just hold off. You'll get your chance. Just be patient. I know there are pl pl plenty of people out there that are putting up uh, websites and stuff like that for the release of this console, like uh, Wario 64, and then PlayStation or Sony consoles, and another one on Twitter. If you you have a Twitter, follow them. They drop, um, you know. They tell you the second they go live. They drop URLs. They drop URLs and things like that for you. So, if you really are on the hunt for one, that's probably the best way to do it. But if you don't, you know, you don't, don't need to rush, like we said. Yeah, you you can give it some time because just about everything that I can think of, it's coming out on both, you know, PS4 and PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. It's kind of mandatory, I think, for the moment for them to come out on both. We, we won't see them, you know, bring in the next-gen exclusives probably for a little while, I think. For sure. I, I think know. the probably the next exclusive, exclusive might be God of War, actually. I don't think there's anything else. That or Horizon. You know, you know Horizon, yeah. I don't, I don't know when that one's. I haven't seen anything on that one. Yeah. But I think... Those are probably going to be the next two exclusives for him. Uh, I know Cyberpunk's coming out. That one's going to be big. Um, I, can't wait to, I can't wait to play that on console and on PC to see how see how they run. That looks like a pretty uh, beautiful game. So that's another one to look forward to. And for all of you, me included, Elder Scrolls fans, whenever they decide to release the new one, I don't know that is. Um, can't wait to see that as well. I think that's pretty much it. I think it's fair to consider that pretty much everything in a nutshell. Um, if you do get your hands on it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think you'll be quite happy with your purchase. If you can't get your hands on it, don't feel like you have your Christmas ruined or anything. Don't, don't, <laughs> you know, let it eat you away. Don't be the Karen on Twitter out there tweeting it. Adults who have money of their own for buying the console before everybody else. 
Don't be that. Don't be that lady just because you decided to wait till Christmas to get him it. No. Um. Otherwise, you will have a lot to look forward to in the future. But right now, you know, it's good for what it is. But don't feel a rush. So I think that pretty much sums up the PS5. It's an excellent glimpse into the future from what we've done so far. For sure. And I'm excited to see where we can go from here. So, here in the next few years, maybe we'll see PlayStation VR 2, maybe we'll see the true, you know, extent of new titles, not to mention the Ratchet and Clank. It's another exclusive. We'll see you sometime, maybe... More systems come in line with the haptic feedback. I'm sure they're going to come up with all sorts of stuff. New engines are going to come out for the consoles. Um, you know, new engines for different uh, brands of games. Um, as far as 4K goes on it, don't feel the need to buy a 4K TV. If you have a nice desk or a nice little setup, buy a 4K monitor. They're way cheaper. Just get a nice 27 inch or something a little bit bigger and you sit there in front of it. They, it's going to be a lot cheaper for you if you go that route instead of trying to buy a big ass TV. Absolutely. So, with that, everyone, I hope this might, uh, you know, help you make up your mind on what your thoughts and feelings are. Maybe put some uh, concerns at ease or give you some more things to look forward to. And other than that, I think that's a wrap. And I hope that you enjoyed this and got uh, something valuable out of it. So with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. And maybe we'll get back to Demon Souls or something. 